perch. Perca flave essence. Um, this is just a little more information regarding the perch and our dissection of it. Um, the perch falls in the Animalia Kingdom under the phylum Chordata. Um, the remaining class, order, family, genus, and species you can see here. Quick review of the external features. The maxilla is the upper jaw, mandible lower jaw, the eye, the operculum is the gill plate covering, the pectoral fin is um, on the lateral side, slightly posterior to the operculum. The pectoral fin is on the ventral side, so on the bottom of the fish. The lateral line runs right down the midsection of the fish um, from anterior to posterior. Inside of our lab, we call it the anterior dorsal fin, um, the spiny dorsal fin. Either one of those will be acceptable. The posterior dorsal fin is the soft dorsal fin, uh, the anal fin, and the caudal fin. And remember, some fish you're going to identify based on whether the caudal fin is flat or forked. So we're going to identify a number of these different parts in the lab. I want to spend a little bit of time going through some of the external anatomy and what its function is. The eyes, they receive light stimuli and they send nerve impulses to the brain. The nostrils receive sense of smell and again sends it to the brain. The lateral line is represented by the number 8 in this picture. Um, it's that horizontal stripe on the sides. It's a series of pores leading to receptors that are sensitive to movement of water and pressure changes. The operculum is the gill covering, so it helps to protect the gills. And then the mouth opening helps to receive food, also allows water to pass over the gills. The scales, they are a protective covering that helps to make the fish more streamlined, also protects uh, against the external environment. There's two dorsal fins that help to stabilize the fish and keep it balanced. The caudal fin or the tail, it helps to propel the fish. The anal fins help them to uh, better maneuver inside of water. It also helps with buoyancy. Uh, the pectoral fins, they help them to maneuver as well. Also gives them ventral lift, so allows them to move up and down in the water. Uh, the pectoral fins, there are two, one on each side. Um, they're slightly behind the gill covering. Uh, they allow for uh, lift. They also help for breaking and rotating in the water. And then the anus is the opening for waste elimination. The skeletal system, it's a framework from head to trunk. It also consists of the tail and the fins. Uh, it consists mainly of a skull, backbone, ribs, fin rays, um, and also has supports for fin rays or fins. The backbone is the central framework for the trunk and the tail. Uh, it consists of a large number of separate segments. Um, these segments can be bone or, cart or cartilage. Bony fish uh, has vertebrates that are made up of, of bone. The ribs attach to the vertebrate and they help to protect the internal organs. You will, in your lab, see uh, all of the rib bones. So the skull encases the brain, and it helps to give support to the mouth and gills. The pectoral fins, they uh, help in lift. Uh, they also help the fish to break and rotate from right to left. Uh, and they also help to girdle or support the abdominal muscles. The pelvic fins help the fish to maneuver better. Anal fins help with lift and maneuver. The dorsal fins help to support um, or are supported by bone or cartilage and they rotate in the tissue above the backbone. It helps to stabilize the fish and keep it balanced. And then the caudal fin helps to propel the fish forward. 
Oh, here's a picture of the skeletal system, and you will notice this skeletal system as you're doing your dissection. The muscle tissues. Fish have three kinds of muscles. They have skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, and cardiac muscles. The skeletal muscles move their bones and fins to swim. It makes up almost all of this, the fish's flesh. And they're arranged one behind the other in, a bro in broad vertical bands. The myomeres, they're easily seen if you, uh, easily seen if you skin a fish. Uh, the, each one of them are controlled by a separate nerve that comes from the spinal cord. Uh, those myomeres um, help to uh, control the direction of the fish, and they also help to bend the tail in opposite directions. Uh, the smooth muscles, they work automatically. They operate in the internal organs. And the cardiac muscles, they work automatically as well, and they form and operate the heart. Uh, the internal organs are grouped into various systems according to function. The respiratory, digestive, circulatory, nervous, and reproductive systems are the systems that we'll look at. Another picture of the perch. The respiratory system. Unlike land animals, almost all fish get oxygen from the water that they're in. They gulp water through the mouth and they pump it over top of their gills. Um, a gill has two rows of fleshy filaments attached to the gill arch. The gill chambers, there's one on each side of the head. It encloses the gills and allows water to enter through gill slits. The gill covering is a flap of bone that protects the gills of any bony fish. Sharks and rays do not have gill coverings. The gill rakers act as strainers to prevent food particles from leaving the pharynx through the gill slits. So they help to protect uh, from losing the food that is caught. In bony fish, breathing begins when gill covers, uh, when the gill covers close and the mouth opens. At the same time, walls of the mouth expand outward, drawing water into the mouth. That water then passes through the mouth to the gills where oxygen is collected. The gill filaments help to absorb oxygen from water and it's replaced with carbon dioxide during that breathing process so carbon di dioxide can exit the body. The digestive system, it starts at the mouth, ends at the anus, um, takes in food to help nourish body cells and it helps to eliminate materials not used. The oral cavity consists of a jawed mouth. It also has a tongue and teeth for uh, catching uh, any food. Uh, teeth in fish are not used for chewing. They are simply used to keep prey caught inside the mouth. The pharynx also contains some teeth. Uh, it's a short tube that connects the, connects the mouth to the esophagus. The esophagus is the tube that connects the pharynx to the stomach. Um, and it is used for swallowing food whole. And then the stomach partially digests food. The gizzard, not all fish have a gizzard, but uh, any fish that has a gizzard um, helps to grind uh, any food before it enters the intestines. The pyloric cica, it regulates passage of partly digested food into the intestines. The duodenum, is the portion of the small intestine that connects the stomach to the intestine. It receives bile or liver secretions from the gallbladder. It's the first bend in the um, in the digestive tract right after the stomach. The intestines they complete the digestive process by absorbing nutrients into the bloodstream, and then waste and undigested food uh, is passed out through the anus. The liver secretes bile to help food digest. And in sharks, oil helps with buoyancy as well that comes from the liver. So these pictures might help you to identify a number of parts inside of your fish as well. The urinary system consists of the kidneys and the urinary duct. Helps to remove move waste from the blood. 
also eliminates waste through the anus. And uh, in fish, this opening is for urine and feces, so it's a urogenital pore. Uh, the urinary bladder, it collects and stores urine for elimination. So again, this picture might help you to identify some of those parts as you do your dissection. The circulatory system. The circulatory system consists of the heart and the blood vessels, helps to distribute blood to all parts of the body. The heart consists of two main chambers, the atrium and the ventricle. Uh, blood flows through veins to the atrium and then into the ventricle. Muscles in the ventricle pump blood through the arteries to gills, where blood receives oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide. The arteries then carry blood throughout the body. The oxygenated blood is carried throughout the body. Um, blood carries dissolved nutrients from food. Uh, that nutrient is picked up in the, in the intestines. And it also, again, carries oxygen from the gills and carries away waste products from the cells. The kidneys help to remove waste products from blood, which returns to uh, the heart through the veins. The nervous system. The nervous system consists of the spinal cord, the brain, and the nerves. It's not nearly as complex in fish as it is in the mammals or the higher vertebrates. You can spend some time exploring the nervous system. It is a little bit tricky to get the, uh, get the incisions made in the top of the, uh, the head to be able to see the brain. Um, this picture kind of shows a really good representation of that. If you would like to spend some time exploring those parts, you are perfectly uh, welcome to. The spinal cord consists of soft nerve tissue. It runs from the brain all the way down the backbone and then branches out to the nerves. The brain is an enlargement of the spinal cord and it's enclosed in the skull. It's used for sensing and responding uh, anything that happens in the environment. The olfactory lobe is the big part of the brain and it's devoted to the sense of smell. The telencephalon is the part of the forebrain after the olfactory lobe. It's used for sight and also for smell sensory. The optical lobe is used for sight sensory. The cerebellum, it controls muscular coordination and position, so it helps the fish to uh, have motor coordination. And then the medulla is the base of the brain, right where the uh, spinal cord attaches. Um, it helps to control many of the spinal reflexes that occur in the fish. The nerves extend from the brain and the spinal cord to every part of the body. Sensory nerves help to carry messages from the sense organs to the spinal cord and brain. The motor nerves help to carry me uh, messages from the brain and spinal cord to the muscles, and they help to control skeletal muscles. Uh, there's no conscious control over the smooth muscles and the heart muscles. Um, because those are automatically controlled, uh, you, you don't want to have to think about whether your heart is beating or not, or whether your smooth muscles are working or not. Uh, so inside of fish and at, uh, higher organisms, uh, there's no automatic nervous system, or excuse me, there is an uh, automatic nervous system that's controlled there where you don't have to think about it. Uh, the lateral line, it's that, again, horizontal stripe that runs on the sides of the fish, has a, tiny, a series of tiny pores that lead to receptors that are sensitive to mechanical movement and sudden pressure changes in the water. The reproductive system. <clears throat> in males, there's the testes, and they help to uh, produce a sperm-contained fluid called milt. Uh, some sharks have claspers that help in um, that sexual reproduction process. The ovaries are found in females. They help to produce the sex cells of eggs. Um, eggs are also called, called roe or spawn in fish. Uh, most fish release their sex cells into the water through the urogenital pore. And that is an, this is an opening near the anus. Uh, fertilate, fertilization uh, for fish is external of the body. There's a 
few other pictures. Uh, this is a picture of a male, so you can see the difference between a male here where the gonad is full of milk. Your fish, when you do your dissection, may or may not contain this. This picture is a female, and you'll notice the gonad is full of eggs. There are some special organism, uh, organs of bony fish. The swim bladder is one. Um, this helps to promote buoyancy in the water. It's filled with gases uh, that are produced by blood. And it helps to maintain the depth that the fish hangs out in. Uh, the lung fish and a few other fish, um, they actually have that as a, as a structure that serves in air breathing. Um, so catfish are an example of this. They may store uh, oxygenated gas inside of that uh, air bladder where they can kind of live outside of water for minimal amounts of time. So as water pressure increases with depth, fish are going to uh, adjust the amount of gas that is found in there. And again, here's a picture of some different parts of the fish, of the perch. And again, same thing. And finally, this slide gives you a number of the different structures along with their function. This slide may be helpful to you in the future as you come back and review some of the different parts of the fish. For our fish dissection, you may end up with a specimen bag that has a large number of specimen in it. If that is the case, please make sure to open it up just far enough that you can take out your specimen that it, uh, you are going to be dissecting. Uh, so in this case, we want to take out just the fish. Uh, and in our lab manual, uh, it shows um, a, a yellow perch. We are actually going to be using a white perch. The, the anatomical structures are going to be exactly the same. Uh, but you will notice that the, the organism looks slightly different from the picture. Um, so it, it, it may throw you for a loop there, but not to worry. All of the uh, structures that make up that organism are exactly the same. So prior to beginning this lab, please make sure that you have on a pair of protective safety gloves. Uh, please make sure that you have an apron on covering up your clothing. and also appropriate eye protection. Once you have taken your uh, specimen out, take your bag and roll it up. And then place your specimen bag with the remaining specimens inside of another Ziploc bag in order to preserve them for future use. So I'm just gonna take these here and I'm gonna tuck them inside of another Ziploc bag. And they will stay in good shape for future use. In order to complete this dissection, each group will need a comparative animal dissection guide. It looks like this. You're going to open up your comparative uh, animal dissection guide to page number 24. On page number 24, it has our perch dissection guide. I'm going to walk you through what's found there uh, in this video. You'll notice that the picture looks slightly different than the perch that we are going to be identifying. All of the external structures are, are going to be the same. Internal structures are going to be the same. Uh, the only difference is uh, the species in this case. So we're going to start with the external structures found on the perch. We're going to examine the external features. We'll identify the spiny and soft 
dorsal fins, the pectoral fins, the pelvic fins, the anal fin, the caudal fin, we'll, and we'll also describe the function of each of these in the following uh, PowerPoint presentation. So in order to complete this lab, you are going to need a scalpel, You may need a set of tweezers, you will need a number of pins in order to fasten your organism down. If you find that your specimen tray does not have uh, a number of an, enough of the pins that you need, uh, please be sure to see me. I have a large amount of them uh, that are available. may also need a magnifying glass, a pair of scissors, and a probe. And again, if your dissection tray does not have any of these uh, utensils or tools that you may need for your dissection, uh, please see me and I'll be sure that you get what you need for it this project. All right, we're going to start by observing the operculum. The operculum is the protective covering over top of the gills. It's this structure right here. We're going to pull the operculum open and we're going to view the gills. I'm going to tip this up a little bit so you can see it a little better. The gills are the site for respiration. The nostrils. Nostrils are here. These are also called the external nares. They are at the anterior end of our specimen and they are superior to the mouth. The nostrils are not used in respiration like they are in humans. They lead directly to the olf olfactory sacs, so the area where they can interpret smells inside of the water. Observe the eyes. Eyes are not protected by an eyelid. Observe the lateral line. It is a fragmented line that runs across the body. It is a structure that detects vibrations in the water. It's made up of small canals that contain hair cells. And when those hair cells move, the cells are stimulated and they send nerve impulses to the brain. Right here is the lateral line. So it helps fish to identify things that are happening within the water around them. The body is covered with protective scales. So if you move your hand towards the head, You'll notice that there's uh, some small grooves that kind of catch your finger. You can actually take your probe and dig it underneath some of the scales and pop them up. Right 
there is a scale. You'll notice there's a difference in texture if you run your finger from tail to head versus head to tail. The tongue is found inside the mouth. You may have to uh, snip the opening right here towards the hinge of the jaw in order to actually see inside. There's also a thin row of teeth that run both on the top and the bottom of the mouth. It's almost like sandpaper. You can run your finger across it and feel it. The spiny dorsal fin found right on the top of the fish. The soft dorsal fin is found right behind that. You'll notice there are large bone projections, bone-like projections coming out of the spiny dorsal fin and they are absent in the soft dorsal fin. The caudal fin you will notice that on a number of different fish species that you identify in our salmon lab some fish have um, a veed caudal fin whereas other ones have just a straight flat caudal fin. The anal fin is found on the ventral side of the fish. The pelvic fin is found right behind the operculum. Pelvic fin is found right below the pectoral fin. That is the extent of the exterior structures that we are going to need to look at. The remainder of the dissection will involve actually opening up our fish. Next we're going to begin our internal dissection. Beginning at the mouth, use scissors to cut along the ventral midline toward the anal fin. Do not cut the internal organs. Next, cut along the lateral wall of one side of the specimen lift out the muscular wall. So we're going to take our scissors, we're going to turn this guy a little bit to make it easier for you to see. I'm going to start at the mouth. We're going to cut all the way down the ventral midline. Be really careful when we get right here because we do not want to damage any internal organs. So just 
to make sure your scissors is just slightly inside of the muscular tissue. When you get to the pelvic fins, you'll notice there's a little bit of a bone there you'll have to cut through. Take your scalpel and slowly make an incision in order to break open the chest cavity. take and the side that comes out easiest like this side right here popped out from the gill plate from the operculum I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of pry it up a little bit and I'm gonna be real careful of the organs that are in there you'll notice that there is a thin membrane in here you need to kind of cut away go ahead and cut that away and then lift the wall right up and then take your scissors and cut the lateral wall right away go right up behind the back edge of the operculum. I'm going to cut this entire wall right away. And you'll actually cut through uh, some bones that are uh, part of the rib cage. You should be able to just cut it right out. Be sure not to mutilate your fish. Okay, so now we can see the internal structures of the fish. First we want to locate the swim bladder. The swim bladder is towards the dorsal side of the fish. It's found right here. You'll notice if you take your uh, pin and you stick it in there, it's full of empty space. Um, this area is used for buoyancy for a fish. Uh, it allows gases to be exchanged in and out. And based on the amount of gases found in there, it will allow a fish to be more or less buoyant. Some of the preserved specimens will have a deflated swim bladder so it may be a little bit harder to find that this one's actually full of fluid so it was kind of kind of puffed up a little bit we're going to locate the intestine it's a long tube that runs from the stomach to the anus it's covered with fatty layers of adipose tissue We'll remove that layer of tissue um, to observe the intestine more closely. And the intestine is used to absorb um, and digest food. So right here is that fatty tissue. It's kind of a light, light orange color. So we're going to take that fatty tissue and we're going to remove it. You can either pull it out or you can cut it out with your scissors. You'll notice when we get to our frog dissection that there's similar structures inside of frogs, similar fatty tissues. All right, so here's our intestine. it's kind of folded up in there nicely. You can cut a little bit of this membrane away to help us see it better.
be careful while you're trimming to not cut the intestine right out. Sometimes it's difficult to distinguish the stomach, the stomach from the accessory digestive organs. Now that we've identified the intestine, we're going to follow the intestine towards uh, the mouth in order to identify the stomach. And some of your fish may have um, organisms found inside the stomach, uh, so it kind of is, is enlarged and easier to identify. This one does not. There's absolutely nothing in its stomach. Uh, the stomach is right here. You'll notice there's kind of a couple of bends and twists in the intestine. Uh, and then as you get past those bends and twists in the intestine, you hit kind of a large, um, I don't know, maybe green, green bean shaped type structure. That is the stomach. We'll lift the stomach up to locate the digestive glands called the pyloric zika. They're finger-like glands and they release digestive enzymes into the stomach. Lift it up. You can see them. Let's remove this fatty tissue. Right here is one. Here's another one right next to it. And then there's another one, a smaller one, that's uh, attached to that fatty tissue. We're now going to find the uh, pancreas. Uh, pancreas secretes digestive enzymes as well. Uh, the pancreas is a little bit easier to find because it's usually a darker color. You see the pancreas right here off the back side of the stomach. So again, it releases digestive enzymes. We're going to find the liver. The liver is anterior to the stomach. It helps to produce bile. Bile is a substance that breaks down fat. Bile is stored in the gallbladder, which is found below the liver. So the liver is going to be pretty easy to find for us. It's pretty dark in color. It's up anterior to the stomach. See it right here. Having trouble getting to it right now. I got the heart right there. Having trouble getting to the liver. Alright, there we go.
The heart can be found closer to the head region. Fish have a two-chambered heart that pumps blood through a closed circulatory system. Blood enters the auricle and is pumped back out through the ventricle. Heart is found right here. ovaries or the testes those are created inside of the gonads and probably the easiest way to find the gonads is to go back to the anus and slightly above where the digestive system uh, leaves the body there's another set of um, long filaments or tubes that kind of come out of that same area. These are the gonads. They should be um, slightly to the dorsal side of where the digestive system spills out. So again, the gonads uh, for females would produce eggs. And for males, it would produce milt, which contains the sperm. Uh, some of your fish you may end up finding actually have egg masses inside of the ovaries. Once you've finished identifying these structures, observe the other structures identified in the perch anatomy, external and dice. Uh, external and dissection diagra diagrams. Once you, have, once you have observed the structures of the perch, dispose of the specimen in accordance with local guidelines and your teacher's instructions. So you'll need to see me in order to identify where we need to uh, dispose of our perch. Spend some time going through and identifying some of those other structures that are, fo that are found on page number uh, 20. 26. Some other things that would be important for us to find. Would include the urinary bladder, the cerebellum, the gill rakers, the gill filaments, The kidneys, the ural genital pore, the large intestine, the gallbladder. I believe that'll do it for what we need to identify within the fish.